and welcome back to AWS On Air at the DC Summit. I'm A.M. Gravelny, I'm a solutions architect here at AWS, one of your hosts, joined by my co-host. I'm Steve Roberts, a developer advocate for .NET and PowerShell on AWS. And we've got two more wonderful guests. Please introduce yourselves to our audience. Hey, I'm Leo Janowski. I'm a chief technologist uh, for US education. And so I work with our various higher ed, uh, ed tech publishers and K through 12 customers. And, uh, Help them, you know, do mission critical launches and figure out what, you know, what what our service teams, how, how to help them build around the trends that our customers are seeing. And I work uh, with Tom. So my name is Tom Soderstrom. Thanks for having us. Uh, I'm yeah. director of chief technologies globally in the public sector, and uh, I came from NASA, where I was chief technology and innovation officer at JPL. So uh, wow. of course we'll be talking about space a little bit. Steve is going to <laughs> yeah. Steve's going to derail this entire oh, good, uh, this good. entire talk. Steve is a Amateur astronomers. Oh, cool! So, All right. Uh, I actually have some connections to both of you two that I didn't realize. So, uh, Leo, I'm a former teacher. Oh, awesome! Uh, cool. Fourth grade, and Tom, I'm from Houston. So, yeah, right. NASA, right and down the road. And one more connection. I'm actually an assistant uh, professor. Oh, at a university there we go. in New Zealand, of course. Why not? <laughs> Whole family of educators. My okay. mom, my sister, everybody. Yeah. So anyway, moving on to our topic, we're talking trends in public sector. I think it might be useful, though, for some of our audience. We hear the term public sector. Maybe our minds go to the government, right? Mm -hmm. um, what other customers, though, constitute the public sector when we talk about that? So there's there's lots of them. If you think about the government, it actually has every single uh, industry in it. Every vertical market is in like healthcare, education that Leo covers, uh, everything. So when we talk about these trends that we're going to talk about, it's they are actually global trends that affect all industries. And we are, have a slide up with which industries did we find will change the most. All of them apply to the public sector and the commercial sector. Very interesting. Yeah, and even in, for example, education, which we consider public sector, um, there's universities that have hospitals that are tied to them, so healthcare is involved, so it's all kinds of things you wouldn't think about. The other thing that's interesting about the public sector is it matters a ton what we do. Anybody heard of COVID? <laughs> <laughs> it affects all the citizens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Never will hear of COVID again, ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's interesting. Even in a school, you find very, you know, there's a nurse at most schools, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got healthcare there too. Um, so Steve, you want to ask uh, a Since question? Since we're talking about trends, um, what are we seeing over the next five years? I mean, what should customers be concerned with? Sure, so it, what we have is we have a lot of colliding curves. So you get this exponential curve of innovation faster than anything we've ever seen before. And the enabler of all of it is cloud. Because I did startups before and I would spend 60% of the, the money I got from uh, venture capital on office space and computers. Now, yeah. startups are forming a team, trying something, they don't go for venture capital until they need marketing help. They already had the product up and running. So you'll see some amazing things. So we came up with, what we did is we looked at what are the industry trends? And we had 60 trends. And who looked at it? It was all the chief technologists in the commercial sector and the public sector of AWS. And what we came up with was 60 is too many. So we down-selected and voted and down-selected, and we came up with eight that we'll show you. But in doing that, we were thinking, what customer segments will change the most? And so these are the ones that you're seeing on the screen. Anything from telecom, uh, you have telecom everywhere, much faster, lower latency, 5G, soon 6G. Uh, entertainment, many screens, a lot of different contents. It's being changed completely. Uh, healthcare, you have. Yeah, so we have in healthcare, um, there's telehealth is becoming a lot more common. I think COVID was a forcing function for that. Yeah. The use of AI in telehealth, both in terms of patient to provider, but also for doctor to doctor, for example, you know, right. when, or even sometimes advising on a surgery, for example. Yeah, consultations, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And uh, in fact, we'll, we're going to, one of our keynote speakers uh, coming up, I think, at 1130 today, th they're going to talk about how they transform their business with the cloud. Um, and it's a, it's a hospital um, affiliate cool. with the university. So That's really you can cool. find out more about that later today. And who would have ever thought that the doctor will prescribe an app now? Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. 
And when you tie in uh, biotech and genomics into that, oh, yeah. Yeah. you could actually get a customized healthcare plan before you even know you have a problem. The expansive data there too yeah. is, is probably only achievable with things like we offer yeah. at AWS as well. That's yeah. right. Managing that data, working with that data. Uh, traditionally, if you're buying all of that storage, that's yeah. probably do, not possible. Yeah. Do, do, do you happen to know how much data is being generated? I don't. No. I, I would love to though. It's 1.6 uh, megabytes okay. per person. Per person? Per second. <laughs> Yeah, when I, you I, first I, started, I was thinking, you know, 1.6 <laughs> megabytes, yeah, that's, that's okay, not, that's all right. <laughs> manageable, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of data. Yeah, and I, I used to work with a, a customer that was a, a, a you know, a biotech startup, and they had genome sequencers, right? And they would just upload straight from the sequencer into S3, and allow, enable them to do all kinds of interesting things with that. Yeah. So, so you'll see the rest here, and we're going to talk about education, because that's yeah. Leo's baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but in particular, government and space, mm -hmm. Uh, government is becoming, it's no longer an observation, we'll do what the government tells us, we're interacting with the government. We have to trust it, uh, and we, it's the national control, and we'll talk about that on the trans. Space, uh, it needs yeah. it all. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to hear about internet of space things. Oh, Not just internet yeah. of, we'll have internet of medical things, internet of military things. It's becoming very specialized. And the, di the reason is the lower, much lower barrier to entry. It's about 1 20th of what used to cost 15 years ago to build, to launch, to track. And the data is 100 at the cost. Uh, and of course, we're hearing about uh, tourism, yep. space tourism. So let's talk about trends. Yeah, oh, and yeah. let, me, let me quickly talk about education. And I have one more government plug. So also on our keynote, we're going to have USBS talk. And I'm not going to spoil too much of their talk, but they're going to talk about their COVID, the, how you could order COVID tests online, oh. which was, you know, if you consider the size of the U.S. population, a pretty big undertaking, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Quite a bit of us. Yeah, yeah. That, they, that was enabled uh, by the cloud. And for, in terms of education, um, we've seen, a, a, you know, recently a ton of our customers, they, uh, they've switched to remote learning or they've enabled that remote learning as an option or hybrid. Uh, virtual proctoring is now a thing, so you can take certification exams, school exams, and uh, you don't have to have a physical proctor in the room, and the proctors can get scaled by things like AWS recognition or a AI. So all kinds of interesting things happening there. So. That is very yeah. cool. It's an exciting cool. future, and yeah. like it's never been a better time to be part of this. So what are those trends? How do we get from 60 to eight? Uh, if we start, uh, I, I tell the young kids now clockwise, they go like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at, these are actually industry trends. They are for the next five years. And if you look that far in the future, there's absolutely no difference between public sector and commercial sector. It becomes how you achieve compliance. So clockwise, starting at three o'clock, are you with me? Uh, so far, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's environmental, social, and governance. Yes. Yeah, that's why where I thought you were going. <laughs> why is yeah. that a trend? Why is it an industry technical trend? Because you have to prove to your constituents that you are, in fact, care about sustainability, Right. And there'll be carbon credits and carbon penalties. Yeah, we're facing a major climate crisis. Absolutely. Yeah. The fact that it's you're socially, you're hiring with equity, uh, and that you have a governance that can be inspected. So you have to prove it. So lots and lots and lots of data. And AIML is going to be a big deal there. Uh, so pipe in any time you think yep. you should. Local control with global security and trust is the only cloud trend on here. And what we're seeing is countries want essentially GovCloud. AWS GovCloud, but they want it smaller, faster, cheaper, and they want it to be able to be disconnected for obvious reasons right. what's going on uh, with wars. Sure. Yeah. And for this one, for example, as an example in education, uh, when the pandemic started, I had a, a tech customer who they wanted to go live overnight in a country in the Middle East. And so they had to spin up in a, one of our regions. So overnight, they got access to all the capacity they needed, and you know, in previous world, that would have been really hard. Oh yeah. And we're yeah. seeing, you know, universities who are offering their content all around the world and trying to scale it, scale out to not just their, you know, people who are getting degrees. We're seeing again EdTech customers scaling around the world, and uh, but at the same time, they need to comply with standards with, you know, whatever the compliance regimes are in those countries. And uh, you know, so I, I think that there's an interesting yeah. feature there. Regional access has always been one of the major yeah. drivers yeah. of cloud adoption, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like. Being able to expand to the places that you need to go yeah. uh, without 
having to foot the bill for that. Exactly. Right? And if you combine open source, where you can store your code, have other people help you with it, and run it then in the right cloud environment, you got a, a perfect recipe for moving fast. Yeah. And cheap. Yeah. Yeah. So local control, that we talked about that. Advanced technology experience. That was actually 10 different trends. But what, what combined them was customers want to experiment with advanced technologies. The ones that were most common was uh, quantum computing. So when the boss come and ask you, hey, what do you know about quantum computing? Well, let me tell you, we're experimenting <laughs> right now. And we did that at Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So we were part wow. of coming up with AWS Bracket. I was going to say, I know Bracket. Yeah. That's yeah. about all I know about quantum computing. So we actually <laughs> used it to uh, figure out how to use the antennas most efficiently, an optimization wow. problem. So I'm going to try not to go down too deep, because <laughs> it'll take forever. And you might steal Steve. Steve might go join your all team right. uh, to <laughs> so, go work on So satellite. Bracket is super interesting. And What's interesting them. about it, last piece on that, is that it combines every single, well, not everyone, but many different quantum computers, gate computers, annealers, uh, uh, simulators, et cetera. So you don't have to pay a lot of money. You don't have to buy one. Uh, you can just use it. And another trend is uh, blockchain. And you can use Amazon's blockchain uh, or QLDB, quantum ledger right. database. Mm -hmm. So you can get started even for free with a free version of blockchain. So, and you know, and that, try not to go down a deep here. <laughs> Immutable databases are important. For Immutable databases, and that actually came from JPL for space. You oh, have to prove that something had been radiation hardened. Really? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have uh, guessed that. I was on did. AWS Customer Advisory Board for 13 years. So wow. It's, yeah, it's, uh, we were the first enterprise and first government, so we, JPL had a little bit of influence. It was That's nice. That's pretty cool, right, Steve? Yeah, the other is. one is low code. Yeah. So you, of course, have Amplify, you have Honeycode, you have AI, SageMaker, yeah. Lab. Yeah, SageMaker Studio Labs is great. Very you cool. You don't need an AWS account, right? You can go and, yep. you, and you want to play around with AI ML. You, within yeah. five minutes, you have it. It's great place uh, to learn yeah. AI yeah. ML, Oh, it's too. great. And of course, networking. So 5G, LoRaWAN, all of that is, uh, we're seeing private 5G is a big deal. Yeah, we're talking uh, CloudWAN actually next. Oh, so. good. Oh, perfect. That, that, that works so, well. Tomorrow's workplace, it's really, that has a timestamp on it of two years. Uh, everybody went to work from home. It was very egalitarian. Now we're coming back in the office. Is the people on the phone, are they going to be forgotten again? Or how do we do that? We became productive but not creative. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix it? So that's the idea. And how do you give access to, uh, you might have data that you, know, you don't want on your laptop, but you want to give access to, to it to your employees. So how do you do that with things like private link, workspaces? That's another thing we're seeing. Yeah. And then uh, mixed reality. So is the metaverse real? Oh yeah, it's very real. It, but it's not the place where avatars party. <laughs> it's a place where you actually do your real work. And I'll give, uh, I'll, I'll give you a use case that ties everything together at the end here. Okay. But yeah, mixed reality. Virtual reality is for, for uh, play and, and learning. Augmented reality is for work. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, for, for example, you, I could see it used in training in medical schools, for example. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we used Google Glass a lot. And, but Google Glass, we met with Google, and they discontinued it. But the use cases were really important. So JPL uses it to build spacecraft now, to meet on Mars, et cetera. So it's real. Uh, I'm hoping AWS becomes the place where all the metaverses run. That'd be really neat, yeah. And that's where they meet. Productive at the edge, that's a really big deal. Kind of ties to tomorrow's workplace. It does. Too. Yes. Because it, the edge is pushing farther and farther out, yeah. all the way into space. Oh, and yeah. so when you think about 5G, it can go far, it can go fast. So if, what if you could have single digit latency anywhere and not have any wires? And that really ties together accessible robotics. Yeah. Where accessible advanced robotics, where they actually get used. Yeah. Um, any points from on a, these? From an education point of view, uh, in terms of 5G, there's a lot of students who, they don't have Wi-Fi at home. They have to go to a parking lot of like a McDonald's yeah. To, yeah. to get online to, do virtual schooling. So I think, you know, if, if school districts, for example, or municipalities offer private 5G, that's huge for, for helping with equity in education. So I think that's another. My sister's first year of teaching uh -huh. was COVID. So yeah, she taught wow. from Zoom, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she had to adapt. 
uh, yeah. and all of us who t had to take our certifications yeah. during yeah. COVID, the virtual proctoring and all yeah. that, yeah. So, I mean, that that's that's the world we live in now. It is. And that's why Productive at the Edge, I think, is massively important. Yeah. And what you'll see from a space perspective is you'll, we're launching 20,000 satellites, not AWS, but the world, in the next few years. You now have AWS um, ground station, mm -hmm. so you can have, there are 12 of those across the Earth, so you can have swarms of spacecraft all communicating, all using AI. So you perfect the algorithms in the cloud and push them out to the edge. And the edge will go infinitely far, whether it's a robot or a spacecraft. Then smarter everything, and I'm going to give a use case that ties it together. A smart city, it's not just a smart city, it's built to become smarter. Mm. When you tie together the lower, the more sensored, very inexpensive, you tie together um, the uh, networking, you low, fast, and far. You tie together more data in the cloud with AIML, being able to push it to the edge. By people using it, it becomes smarter. And that's how everything will be built. So the big use case is this. Um, imagine that you are on the metaverse. You have your augmented reality glasses on. You get alerted from your factory that something is wrong. You, and in fact, it's something is wrong in your company. You drill down and you find it's wrong in the factory. In fact, there's, it's leaking water. So you use your uh, augmented reality and metaverse and you turn, turn off the valve and it turns off the valve in the factory. So what made that happen is a digital twin. So of all the things that are here, a digital twin will be the one thing that ties it all together. And AWS has TwinMaker, which I highly recommend people look at. So when you look at TwinMaker and you look at um, simulation at scale. You can now inject faults into the factory to see what actually happens. Use reinforcement learning to perfect it and then deploy it, whether it's software or hardware. And from an education perspective, like smart campuses, right? So if you're a student and in your dorm room you've got a personal digital system like Lexa, uh, and you can wake up and say, when's my next class? Right. How do I do on that exam? You know, yeah. where's the health clinic? Like all kinds of questions like that that are just built in. Or you know, we, we have actually a tech customers who are working on public safety. So there's some kind of emergency going on yeah. and you can target students in a specific part of campus, send them a, me a message through various channels telling them, hey, go, go stay in your dorm for a while. You know? So uh, this has been a riveting conversation. Uh, yeah, We've got yeah, 30 yeah. seconds left. <laughs> uh, I don't know that we even realized it. I was going to get into space. I know, oh. we didn't even get to talk to space. <laughs> so, so let's, the biggest thing of all is Please. your own personal digital assistant. Okay. And we actually did that at JPL, and we proved that it was 10 times faster to actually talk to the system ah. uh, than it was to type to the system for experts. Very Tony Stark of you. Yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> it's, uh, so if you, could, if you could get access to all the information ever created, and it was yours, dark data, things that you don't care about, and your own work data, right. what could you do? What could you not do? That's pretty amazing. You know, um, I think... We got to wrap up, unfortunately, but thank you both yes. for thank joining us. Thank you us. very much for yeah. Yeah. giving us the time. Incredibly exciting use cases here, I think, yeah. to look forward to. Stick around, we've got more content coming at you. We'll be right here.